All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a first look and overview of a Spyderco. And this is the Spyderco Manix 2 in Rex 45. And this is a sprint run. I'll open it up and show you the paper that comes with it. Spyderco gives you this little paper that explains what a sprint run is. Basically, it's a limited run of a knife in a particular handle material, blade composition, uh, blade steel combination that they won't run again. So they, they never do a, an exact rerun of the same sprint run. And uh, the thing that makes this one unique is the handle material. So it is in what they're calling a burnt orange uh, which is the same handle color as they used for the HAP 40 sprint runs. But this one is in Rex 45. And as you can see, Rex 45 is a super high speed, whatever that means, particle tool steel. Uh, and it's not a stainless steel. It's a tool steel. And you can see that it has only 4.05% 4, 4 chromium. Uh, there's another kind of insert here talking about the fact that it is a high carbon steel and it will rust if you don't uh, keep it, you know, oiled and wipe it off after use and everything. Uh, not something that I have trouble with being that I carry and use traditional knives in 1095, which is even more rust prone than Rex 45 will be but something to be aware of if you don't carry carbon steels very often. So here is the knife and it's the Manix. The Manix is a knife that Spyderco has had in their lineup for a long time. So shouldn't be too new to anybody who's been following Spyderco, but it's a, a classic in their line. And uh, I was kind of excited to see it in this new combination. So the Rex 45 is a steel that I haven't really gotten to use. I just got this knife today and I haven't gotten a chance to try it out, put it to use, but people seem to really like it. People get really excited when Spider Code does knives in this steel. And I think it's really interesting, very typical of Spider Co to use such an unusual steel and especially a non-stainless steel on a modern folding knife. And you can see that this is a very modern knife it has what Spyderco calls their caged ball bearing lock. And how this lock works is there's a plunger that presses a ball bearing up against the tang of the knife. So it works really uh, comparably to the Benchmade Axis lock and now the patent is expired. So a lot of other people are using similar locks, but instead of a bar and a, an omega spring, like a coil spring. This uses a ball bearing that has this plastic cage and then a bar with a, I guess what's also a coil, but a different kind of coil spring. I guess this is a coil spring and they call theirs the uh, omega spring. I'm not sure what the technical term for that type of spring is, but I do think that this kind of spring, you know, and this might not be very scientific of me, but it seems like it would be a more durable, longer lasting spring. I haven't heard any reports at all of people having this spring break, whereas it hasn't happened to me, but every now and then you hear of someone having an uh, Omega spring break. Um, so I think that this is a very durable lock. One positive to the lock is that you see it only requires this um, kind of back spacer or uh, back strap up there where the lock is. So there doesn't need to be one down here. Now this is a full lined, it has full liners, but they are skeletonized quite a bit. So it's not a super heavy knife. The G10 is lightweight, but strong. The burnt orange is, I think a little bit less orange than the other burnt orange that Spyderco has used. When I first saw pictures of it from SHOT Show, I was a little bit disappointed in the color, but it's a little better looking in person than it probably shows on video as well as it did 
in the pictures from SHOT Show. It is definitely an orange color, but it's just a little bit, um, not as bright orange, I would say. A good comparison is this gradation cutlery bullnose in orange synthetic or Delrin. And you can see that the bullnose is quite a bit brighter orange as compared to the burnt orange on the Mannix. But really the first thing I noticed about this knife when I got it is just that it's really, really well made. Um, has very good action, easy to open, classic, uh, middle finger flick, normal flick, and even like an axis lock, you can pull the lock back, swing it open, and swing it shut. So really, really nice action, no blade play at all. It's pretty well centered, maybe slightly towards the non-clip side, but generally really well centered. And just a really solid feeling knife. Uh, a couple kind of specifics that I do like about the Manix are the fact that it has this really big lanyard hole. I don't know, it's not focusing very well, but it's a nice wide lanyard hole so that, you know, sometimes knives have lanyard holes and they're so small that you really can't get paracord through them. But I don't use a lanyard, but if you do, this uh, lanyard hole will be plenty wide. Um, Spyderco really goes crazy with the jimping on the Manix. You can see that it has lots of really solid jimping down here, jimping up here on the uh, thumb ramp, and then in the choil also. So you're going to get a good purchase. I really, really like the blade shape. It's a classic Spyderco leaf shape blade shape. Uh, and it feels good in the hand. It's just the main grip area here is just big enough for me. Uh, if my hand was a little wider, maybe even a little bit chubbier, uh, as it sometimes is, it might not fit my hand completely, but as it sits right now, it's just long enough to get that really solid kind of hammer style grip. And then it's also comfortable choked up on the um, finger choil. And like I said, I haven't really gotten to use this knife, but the edge looks really well done. It's even, the grind looks even, looks to be ground nice and thin, so it'll slice well. And uh, it just really struck me as a, a well-made knife. One interesting thing, you can see there's that red mark on the edge. It actually came that way. So I'm not sure if that's, you know, they mark the edge before sharpening or something like that but it did come with that and I don't really know what it is, but you can see that like all Mannix models, this is made in the US at uh, Spyderco's Golden Colorado factory. And just a really nice knife. Uh, it's something where I am excited to get to try out this CPM Rex 45. And I think that it's a pretty cool combination and I'm glad that the orange, the burnt orange turned out a little better than I was expecting from the videos from SHOT Show. So really well made knife, very high quality, very high quality materials, and not that much more expensive than a normal G10 Mannix. I think that this was like $125 and that's pretty close to what the normal Mannix runs. So if you're able to find one of these, I think it's worth the, you know, increase in price for this upgraded steel, especially if you don't mind carbon steels. So really cool knife, glad to have got to check it out. I got this one from Knife Ship Free. Normally, if I get a knife from Knife Ship Free, I use the mat that they uh, gave me for the videos, but I'm uh, filming this not where I normally film. So uh, if you want to get one of these, watch out. I think a lot of the dealers have already put them up and some of them probably still are going to put them up. So keep an eye out. And as always, don't forget to check out my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and everything like that at Knife Thoughts and follow me uh, on social media. Also, please check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on the knives and uh, subscribe to my channel here and hit the bell for notifications. And don't forget to go out and do good.